We often think of Nazi Germany as an evil dictatorship, a totalitarian regime ruled by the ultimate villain, Adolf Hitler. Whilst this is true to a certain extent, such a description doesn't take into account how much success the Nazi party had with German voters. At one stage in their career, the Nazis were the most popular party in Germany by a considerable margin, and rather than ignoring this uncomfortable truth, it's important to understand why so many voters were attracted to history's most infamous political party. The success of the Nazis goes back to the First World War. Specifically, the Treaty of Versailles put enormous strain on the economy due to how much money the Germans were forced to pay the Allies. The economic strain of the country only worsened with the Wall Street crash in October 1929. Though the crash impacted the entire world, Germany was particularly hard hit as she relied on loans from America. Production output in Germany halved between 1929 and 1932, leading to millions of unemployed citizens. Ex-workers, particularly young men, roamed the streets aimlessly with no sense of purpose. The crippled economy also led to a rise in prostitution, gang violence, robbery and food scavenging. Though the working classes were the most affected, middle class industries suffered as well. White collar workers in the financial, tourist and retailing sectors were hit hard by the crash. Hitler and the Nazis exploited this economic turmoil by offering German citizens a way out. Joseph Goebbels was the man behind the Nazi propaganda. From his headquarters in Munich, he created a propaganda campaign that connected with Germany's desperate citizens. Voters were given a clear choice, stick with the failing Weimar Republic or embrace a glorious future with the Nazi party. Posters, leaflets, papers and speeches were all used to promote this central message. Goebbels also took advantage of modern technology by using films and gramophone records as part of his campaign. This fed into the image of the Nazis being an advanced, modern political party. What's more, the Nazis were perceived to be tough as well. Marching brown shirts, banners, flags and the military poses of Nazi leaders gave an impression of ruthlessness and power. The Nazis were also aware that certain issues were more important to voters in certain areas. They would train their speakers to alter their speeches based on who was listening and advertise specific topics in specific areas so as to attract as many people as possible. Hitler's speeches, especially those in 1932, were huge events. The Nazi propaganda portrayed Hitler as a national saviour, someone who could lift the country out of misery. Hitler's flying tours helped to popularise the cult of the Führer. He was able to visit millions of people within a span of a few days. Hitler's plane would descend from above in a spectacular fashion to cheers from crowds assembled below. As he landed on the ground and vacated the plane, he was offered flowers whilst bands provided appropriate music. As for the actual speeches, Hitler's main focus was always the failure of the Weimar Republic and the importance of taking Germany into a brighter future. And he was surprisingly open about turning the country into a one-party state. Hitler didn't shy away from his hatred of the Jews either. This was particularly noticeable in the run-up to the November election in 1932, when Hitler described Jews as a plague that has beset almost the entire European continent. Anti-Semitism wasn't popular with all German citizens by any means, but it didn't stop the Nazis' electoral success. In the September election of 1930, the Nazis won 6.5 million votes. This was a major success given they had received less than a million in 1928. They weren't the largest party yet, but their campaign strategies were clearly working. Their biggest democratic success came in 1932. In the July election, 14 million Germans voted for the Nazis. This made them the largest party with 37% of the vote and 230 seats in the Reichstag out of 608. Just four years ago, they'd received 3% of the vote. They were less successful, however, in the November election of 1932. The Nazis only picked up 33% of the vote and 196 seats in the Reichstag. They saw this decline as a failure, but they were still the largest party by a significant margin. Despite their successes, the Nazis had no more use for fair democracy. They needed to use other methods to obtain power. During the run-up to the election in March 1933, they used violence and intimidation against their political opponents. They ended up with 44% of the vote, but this still wasn't enough for a parliamentary majority. So, through the use of even more intimidation, the Nazis were able to pass the Enabling Act on the 23rd of March 1933, which gave Hitler the powers of a dictator. Though fair democracy wasn't enough for a majority in the Reichstag, the Nazis were frighteningly popular with the German people. 
As strange as it may seem, Hitler's message and the Nazi propaganda connected with millions of citizens who were desperate for change. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to learn more about history, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll be back soon with another video.